Welcome back to the channel. This week we're looking at sticky headers and footers and we're also looking at how to implement with Hugo. The CSS library we're using is Bootstrap 5. We're looking at a few different ways of achieving the sticky header, that's sticky and fixed header. And with the footer we'll be using a array of classes put together to achieve a sticky footer. It's assumed you've got Hugo and Visual Studio Code set up and running and you've also imported Bootstrap 5's CSS and JS into your project. You will need to download the template with the link in the description so that you're ready to start today's tutorial. On completion of this video you'll be able to convert a header or a navbar to become sticky or fixed and you'll be able to convert a footer to become sticky and that means there'll be no space below that footer. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this week's video. I actually have full length courses on Skillshare and they focus on static web design with Hugo and Bootstrap 5, ranging from basic topics to intermediate and more advanced features of Hugo and Bootstrap. This month, Skillshare is offering one month free membership. It's a free trial, so click on the link below in the description. You can access your free trial. You can cancel at any time and you'll also be supporting this channel by using that affiliate link. So the first thing you have to do is use the link provided in the description below to download the source code for this project. And then once you've downloaded that source code, you'll have to open up a new terminal and then run Hugo server. And we'll check out the template to see how it looks. So you can control click on the link after Hugo has rendered the site and is running the development server. So this is our template and there's a big gap at the bottom below the footer some white space which we don't want. And if we make the page narrower, you'll notice that the header disappears. So we want to make the, the header or the navbar sticky and we want that footer to be sticky as well so that we don't end up with the space below it. So the footer gets pushed down to the bottom of the page regardless of how much content we've got. And here's a more extreme example with lots of white space at the bottom. So that's what we're going to achieve during today's video. Now, there are a few ways we can do the sticky header or navbar. The first one we'll look at is the sticky version and then we'll look at fixed second. So let's get started. We will firstly uncomment out this header. So we're going to look at how sticky enables the navbar below the header to scroll down the page. So let's check that out. So the current behavior, if you reduce down your view with the developer tools, is as we scroll down, the header comes, the navbar comes to the top of the page and we keep scrolling and the navbar disappears. By making this navbar sticky, it will scroll to the top of the page and it will remain there. So let's go back to VS Code. To make this work, the navbar has to be a parent tag. It can't be inside, it can't be a child tag of the header, for example. So we'll pop navbar down there below header. We'll save that and then we'll open up the navbar and we'll put a class in our nav tag and it will be sticky dash top. Then we'll save it and we'll inspect it in the browser and that's our sticky behavior. As we scroll down, our navbar gets top of the page and then it sticks. And that's the exact behavior that we're after. Let's now check out a fixed header. Before we do that, we will remove the sticky top class from navbar and then we'll go back into base of and we'll comment out the header and because the navbar now becomes the header we'll put it back inside the, the header tag. So a fixed header or navbar acts differently to sticky in that whatever you make fixed will stay at the top of the screen permanently regardless of what scrolling is taking place. It's a little bit more simple in design and for implementation as well. I'm going to navigate to the navbar partial. I'm going to put fix top in inside the nav tag and the class parameter. And we'll save that and we'll have a look. So we now have a fixed header, but the problem with fixed compared to sticky is that it's in the way of the content. If we have a look, we've got our nav bar up here, but then our content is sitting behind it. There's no padding between them. And that's the due to the way that fixed works. You look at fixed top, the class, we've got a fixed position and it's right at the top. 
and then our main content is going to be sitting underneath it. So we've got to create some padding to make space for that. So let's go back to our template. So we'll go back into base of, and then for main, we'll add a class to it. And the first one we'll add is MT for margin top. We'll make that five. Might not be enough, so we'll do padding top three, PT three, and save that. And now if we check out the main, you'll notice we've got the orange bar and the green bar, and that's pushing the content below the nav bar. That's got nothing to do with the nav bar, those colors you can see on the screen, that's all to do with the main section. We'll go to the about page, and you'll see how about is clearly below the nav bar due to the margin which we created, which was the orange box, and the padding which was the green box. If you need more padding, you could change PT3 to PT5. I'll just do it here in developer tools so it doesn't uh, get saved in the project. You'll see I've now got that big green box, but I think that's too much. I think we'll leave it um, at three for the padding top. That's one rem. All right, let's check out the footer now. So the sticky footer concept isn't something that's built into Bootstrap. We do have to craft that ourselves. So I'll show you all the different classes we're going to add. And there's not too many to pad out the content in the main section and push that footer right to the bottom of the page. So there are a few classes we need to add. We'll start with the body. I'll put in a class parameter. We're going to enable flex. So we'll do d dash flex for display flex. Then do flex dash column. And that sets the flex direction of column. So we get a vertical layout. We're then going to do min dash vh dash 100. And that will set the minimum height of the body to 100% of the browser window. So we're always going to have a page that at, at a bare minimum is the height of the browser window. So there will be no white space at the bottom of the page. The next thing we need to do is go down to our main class. And we're going to set our main class so that, if possible, there will be a margin at the bottom of the main section. So we're going to use mb-auto, and that will take up any available space. So it will push the footer right to the bottom of the page. If we have lots of text or images on our page, lots of content, the footer will then get pushed further down necessarily. And that's why I'm calling it a sticky footer. So we'll save that. We'll check it out. So our first example is the about page. We've got our footer that's been pushed to the bottom of the page due to the classes that we just added. We'll go back to the home page as an example with our narrow display and the footer's off the screen and we've just got natural behavior there because we've used minimum height, vertical height of 100. This page exceeds that and it's not, the height isn't set to 100%, it's the minimum height. So it'll overflow happily. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell notification. You can leave comments below and feel free to drop by and visit me on Skillshare. I've got full length courses on Hugo and static web design using Bootstrap. Bye for now.